Alright, so for the last little section of notes, it's a really simple topic. It's, you know, it sounds complicated, Graham's Law of Diffusion, but it's actually a very, very simple concept um, that I don't think you guys will have a hard time with at all. So, first of all, effusion versus diffusion. Chances are you have heard this word before. You know that this word means when um, a gas, usually an odor, of some kind just kind of spreads throughout the room. That's diffusion, that's, you know, the technical definition. But effusion is when a gas escapes through a little teeny tiny opening. So this would be a kind of loose definition of diffusion because the opening's pretty big and gases can go through. This where you have a little teeny tiny pinhole is effusion. And this tends to happen depending on how much pressure is over on this side. This can happen with a lot of force. Um, you should look up on YouTube Mythbusters uh, probably compressed gas cylinder, and you'll find a picture of what happens. Um, if you think about it, you know, you have your little gas cylinders. They look like this. Sorry. Hush about my drawing. I'm not an artist. And then they have the little nozzle up here. Well, if you cut this nozzle off, you know, this is very high-pressure gas. Whoops, sorry. And so that gas escapes out through here with a whole lot of force. And it'll send Newton's uh, third law. You, every reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. If the gas is flying out this way, then the cylinder is going to go flying this way. And they show how it'll actually go through a cinder block wall, which is pretty cool. So you should look it up. Uh, rates of effusion and diffusion, they all depend on velocities. And to keep things constant, you say that you know you got to make sure that pressure and temperature remain the same regardless of the gas the only thing that's different is the identity of the gas and probably their velocities <coughs> sorry um just a, remember kinetic energy all depends on temperature temperature is actually a measurement of relative or average kinetic energy of all the gas particles in a sample if you've forgotten that just go back a couple of sections um it's the third or fourth point to the kinetic molecular theory um, and we're saying we have constant temperature so that means all of these little gas molecules have the exact same kinetic energy so then how can they have the same kinetic energy but have different velocities well it's because kinetic energy is not measured only by velocity but also by mass so if you look at this relationship at the same temperature Two separate gases will have the same amount of kinetic energy because that's what temperature measures. But if they have different masses, if their masses are different, then their velocities are going to be different. And basically, it's just like the pressure volume relationship where it's that inverse thing. If mass goes down, then that gas has got to be traveling faster so that the kinetic energy stays the same as a gas that have a heavy mass. It's going to have to slow down to keep that kinetic energy the same. And it looks like this. So you have little bitty teeny tiny light hydrogen gas, and this is all at room temperature, um, travels, effuses, if you will, a lot faster than um, big fat heavy CO2 gas at the same temperature and pressure. So you can see the relationship here. It's definitely not linear. You know, this looks like a nuclear decay, uh, exponential decay, I think is what it would be called in your math class. Uh, and that's because of the whole mv squared thing, so it makes sense. Um, so how are rate of effusion and velocity of a particle related? Well, they are directly proportional. The faster particles are moving, the more likely they are to escape or spread out. So heavier particles move slower than lighter ones at the same temperature. And here is your jacked up looking formula. I'm going to erase this because you can't even read that. Um, so basically you have the rate of effusion of gas A, just any gas A, divided by the rate of effusion of gas B. So this is basically the ratio of the rates of effusion A to B is going to be equal to the square root, square root because of the whole V squared thing on the last page, of the molar mass, remember capital M stands for molar mass, of gas B over the molar mass 
of gas A. So here it's the rate of A over the rate of B is equal to the square root of the molar mass of B over the molar mass of A. Don't forget that these, well, you don't have to memorize this formula, but don't misread this formula and think, oh, I've got A over B here, so I have to have A over B here. They're flipped. Uh, and like I said, you do not have to memorize this formula. I will give you this formula. You just simply have to know how to use it. All right, so who do we have to thank for this? Well, it's Mr. Thomas Graham, and that's why this is called Graham's Law of Effusion. Um, you can write that down, read that, whatever. So here's our example. Compare the rate of effusion of hydrogen and oxygen gases at the same temperature and pressure. <clears throat> so if we want to compare, then that's just really asking us for the ratio of those two gases. So we're going to say the rate, and since hydrogen was listed first, I'll say the rate of H2 to the rate of O2 is going to be equal to the molar mass, the square root, of the molar mass of oxygen over the molar mass of hydrogen. So plug that in, square root. Molar mass of oxygen, remember, is 32. Molar mass of hydrogen is 2. So you can see this really easily. Square root of 32 over 2 is just going to be equal to 4. So what this says, if you were to put this into a sentence, this is really a ratio of 4 over 1. So it's saying that the rate of effusion of hydrogen is 4 times faster than the rate of effusion of oxygen. And then I think I've got the math in here. Yeah. Carried it out too few more sig figs on this calculation, but you can get the general gist of it. All right, nitrogen gas effuses through a pinhole 1.7 times faster than another gaseous element at the same conditions. Estimate the other element's uh, molar mass and figure out what it is. So if it's nitrogen gas effuses through a pinhole 1.7 times faster, then that means the rate of nitrogen to the rate, we'll just call it x, since that's what we're trying to find, the rate of gas x, is equal to Nitrogen is 1. Times, 1.7 times faster. So 1.7 over 1 equals the square root of the molar mass of our unknown, so molar mass of X, divided by the molar mass of nitrogen. Well, each nitrogen is 14.01, so 28.02. Go through your algebra to solve this. You need to square both sides. So 1.7 squared, whoa, 1.7 squared is equal to 2.89, so you get 2.89 is equal to the molar mass of x over 28.02. Of course, you can see right away what to do. Molar mass of x is equal to 28.02. I don't know why I said 9.2. Uh, 80 point, basically 81.0. And if you look on your periodic table, Finding a gas that has a molar mass of 81. Uh, let's see, we got <clears throat> krypton looks to be the closest one because krypton has a molar mass of 83.8. So that would be my best guess. Uh, I don't really see anything else. Bromine is 79.9, but remember bromine is Brinkelhoff. And so Br2 is actually going to have a mass of like 160 or something. All right, next example. Oh, no, this is the same example. Here's just the work for it. You can see what it is. So it has to be Krypton. Because remember, in chemistry, close counts. Okay, third and final example, if I have time. Yeah, if I have time. Nitrogen and neon gas samples are at the same temperature and pressure. If nitrogen gas particles have an effusion rate of 460 meters per second, what's the effusion rate of the neon particles? So rate of nitrogen over, I'm just doing the one that I get to first. It doesn't matter. I could do the rate of neon if I felt like it on top. Rate of neon is equal to, well, they told me the effusion rate of nitrogen is 460. I don't know the rate of neon, so that's going to be my x square root. And now neon goes on top, and the molar mass of neon is 20.18. Molar mass of nitrogen is 28. 20.02. Solve this guy. 20.18 divided by 28.02. Second square root of that. 0.72. 0.72. 
uh, you get 0.849 basically 0 0.849 and remember that's equal to 460 over X so you rearrange this to solve for X and you basically get uh, 460 divided by 0 0.849 and that is equal to 0 0.849 542042 and the units on this are meters per second and that makes sense because neon is smaller than nitrogen so it should have fused faster um, that is all I've got for now if you have any questions come by and ask I'll feel free to, I'll, I'll explain anything I got See you tomorrow.